Hey, welcome folks. Let's finally give the rigorous property for what it means for two groups to be isomorphic. I'll start with telling you what it means for a map between two groups to be an isomorphism. So an isomorphism is a map phi between two groups, G and H. But I'm also going to give names to the binary operation. So the binary operation on G will be a solid dot and the binary operation on H will be this hollow dot. But folks will often write this just as, you know, D is a map from G to H and leave out the, the name of the binary operation. So an isomorphism phi from a group G to a group H is a one-to-one -one and onto map, also known as a bijection. Bijective means both injective and surjective, or both one-to-one -one and onto, such that the group operation is preserved. i.e. for all A and B in my input space group G, we have the following equality. Okay, so one thing that I could do with A and B, well, they're both in G. So I could combine A and B together using the operation in G. And then I can map them via this map phi over into H. And I get some element in H. Okay, That should be the same, however, as if I first applied phi to A to get an element in H. And I also applied phi to B to get an element in group H. And then I combined these two elements using the operation in H. Okay, it's a mouthful. We'll, we'll do some examples. All right, so um, Let me just say what it means for two groups to be isomorphic. Two groups are isomorphic. Say. Two groups G and H are isomorphic. denoted G is isomorphic to H if any such isomorphism, you know, from G to H exists. So you might complain that this feels a little um, asymmetric, right? I'm saying the groups are isomorphic why does the isomorphism go from one to the other? Well, it turns out to be a property that if you can find an isomorphism from G to H, then there also exists a map from H to G that is also an isomorphism. Isn't that also um, kind of a byproduct product of the map being bijective or no? Yeah, you're right. You know, um, whenever, you have an, a whenever you have a bijective map, it has an inverse, but there's a little bit more to prove you also have to prove that the inverse satisfies this property, but it does. Um, I don't think I'll try to show that on the fly right now and it's a little too detailed, but yeah, that's a, good, that's a really good point. Um, because phi is bijective, so is its inverse. And it happens to be the case that since phi satisfies this property, its inverse also satisfies an analogous property. All right. 
So what do I want to do? I think I want to um, copy and paste two pictures above and just talk through this in pictures. And then in the next video, um, we'll, we'll do a homework problem. Okay. So let me copy Zmod 4Z. And this group, the elements of this group were one, I, negative one, and negative I. And the binary operation was just multiplication. Okay. So let me try to draw for you what phi looks like in isomorphism from Z mod 4Z to you know, this collection of comp complex numbers. All right, so I'm just gonna sketch this out for you. What phi does is it maps zero, it maps zero to one. So I'm drawing this arrow here. And it maps one to i, and it maps two to negative i, and finally it maps three, sorry, it maps two to negative one, and finally it maps three to negative i. So it's preserving the colors, right? It's mapping red, green, blue, and purple elements to the red, green, blue, and purple elements, respectively. I might as well draw that on these elements, right? It's mapping zero to one. It's mapping one to i. It's mapping two to negative i. And it's mapping three, ah, it's mapping two to negative one and three to negative i. Okay. So let me talk through this property on a couple of examples. Take any two elements of the input group, which for us is Z mod 4Z, okay? So let's say for the sake of argument that right now um, one is A and maybe two is B. Okay. Me write this differently. So one is A and two is B. Okay, so one thing you could do is you could combine A and B in the first group to get three, okay? So A combined with B in the first group is three. I add A plus B, one plus two, and I get three. And then I can map three over when I map three over, you'll remember three, three gets mapped to negative i, right? So when I map three over, I should get negative i. So this side is negative i. Let's figure out what the other side is. The other side says first map a over to get i and map b over to get negative one and then combine i and negative one. And when you multiply i and negative one, you indeed get negative i, okay? So whether I combine in the first group and then map over, or whether I map a and b over and then combine in the second group, I should get the same answer. Let's do one more example, a and b. So maybe let's take a and b to be the same. Let's take both a and b to be three. So A is three and B is three. So I should be able to combine them in the first group, which here gives me two, and then map over, two maps over to negative one, okay? So that's the left-hand side, it's negative one. What's the right-hand side? The right-hand side says you could instead map over to get negative I and negative I, and then combine negative I with itself in the second group, multiplication, which gives me negative one, because I get negative i times negative i is just i squared, which is negative i. Either way, I get negative one, okay? 
So this, this group structure preservation property is saying it has to happen for all elements A and B. So for all possible inputs A and B in the first group, whatever you choose them to be, whether you combine them in the first group and then map over to the second group, you should get the same answer as mapping each element over to the second group and then combining using the operation in the second group. Public questions? All right, thanks.